Hello. <clears throat> Last one, again. <laughs> it's relatively quick. There isn't too much to say, but um, there, there are some topics just to give a, a quick update on some of the products and also some, some more updates on um, really continuous improvement on, on the portal. Um, so the first one, I mentioned this already, and we're getting closer to, to formally launch that, and that was really based on, on requests from for members to make private VLAN um, available, not only between two different members, but actually between two of your ports in, in different locations. Um, so that's going to that's gonna, uh, come soon. In theory, you could actually order it today. Um, I'm not sure if, if you, the, the way the ordering of private VLAN works currently on the portal, you kind of have to invite the second member. Obviously, at the moment, if you just go and invite yourself, you can, in theory, actually order it. It, it will work. Um, but we're improving the process there, and then once that is done, we'll formally launch it. Um, we also make it available currently. We only um, allow private VLANs up to 10 gig. We do, uh, we will make it available at higher speeds, but they, they might have to go through capacity check depending on where the endpoints are, just to make sure um, we, we keep a bit of an eye on, on that. Um, the other one, uh, and it's really a little bit more of a catch up with many other IXPs, it's, it's adding um, the um, capability of using root servers um, to do remote triggered black hole, um, very much the same way it is done as a standard on, on many um, Internet Exchange root servers, you, you by tagging uh, slash 32 with a, with a specific community, um, that will change the, the next hop. Obviously, uh, we know there are some limitations to, to what that can bring you, but especially with large um, denial of service attacks, it can still add some value, but it obviously requires that people using um, the root servers will actually accept those slash 32. So we know that there is limited benefits, but it gets... Um, it gets asked on a regular basis, um, so we'll, we'll implement it, make it available um, on, on all of the peering lands. As I said, there's a number of, um, Richard already mentioned some of this, a number of, of features that are currently in, in development and that are scheduled for, for release in, in Q1. Um, so over the next couple of weeks, it's the next uh, step of functionality in, in regards to um, ordering of the services here, it's modifications of all logical services, i.e. Um, uh, uh, your, your peering service, your private VLANs and so on, making changes to the bandwidth, upgrading, downgrading those services or even cancelling them, making that full self-service and fully automated so you can do it immediately. Um, there is an, another one which is um, currently, if you, if you get a port by default, um, they're still configured as access port, um, so it's a single, uh, they're not trunk ports, so you can only have a single service on it, there's no, no dot one q tagging. Obviously, if you want to use the additional services, private VLAN and so on, we need to change the configuration of your port, uh, the encapsulation on the port. Currently, that's just a process that you do together with the NOC. This feature is going to allow you to do that um, through the portal yourself. Portal is going to guide you um, through it, give you the information, and then basically, since you obviously need to make the change at your end at the same time as we make the change at our end, so the portal will um, will kind of assist you in, in doing that work, um, tell you, well, once you're ready at your end, um, click continue here and we'll change the configuration at our end, so keep the interruption as short as possible and you can do it at the time that works best for you. Um, and the other one is, is work that's happening around IXAPI, making, uh, making Cloud Connect service and the map service available um, for ordering through IXAPI. So all of these are, are currently in, in, in progress and um, all scheduled to be released in, in Q1, so over the next couple of weeks. Um, and then finally, there's two... Two features, we, we quite, well, there, there's quite a lot of improvements that are always happening on the portal. And we tend to not mention a lot of them. Um, so I picked two of them of changes that, that were done. I think you all remembered when we moved to the current version of our portal, a lot of the functionality initially remained on what we now call legacy portals. So uh, as, as we go through all of these features and bring them onto 
um, the count portal, we obviously also see, well, are there any improvements we can do at the same time and not just one-to-one -one port them over. So the two that I picked out um, for today's session is um, the uh, uh, member list, list by IPASN, as it's called. Um, so that one has been brought over to the same style um, that, that all the other functionality has, a little bit improved on the usability. You can quite easily filter it by peering line. You might remember before you had a whole row of checkboxes where you needed to, to pick them. Um, you can filter them. Um, you, you, can, uh, you can also still um, decide well, which, are, which is the information that I actually care about, that I actually want to see, and, and change the, the table of, um, of all that information. And you can still continue to export them as a CSV file. Um, if you want to import them into, into your systems. And it kind of runs in parallel, of course. We, we know that there's a number of uh, members which uh, are simply using the, the members.json file, the URX formatted um, JSON file. But for those who prefer a web interface, um, that's this one. The second one is um, the uh, list of maintenances. Obviously, you all get them by email to the different um, ops and ounce mailing lists, but they all always available on the portal as soon as they get announced until they are closed and actually they never disappear, they always stay there. And that's true for maintenances and outages. Um, so that, um, that functionality has been improved quite, quite a bit in over the, when we moved it over. Uh, importantly, you can now limit it to only uh, show you maintenances and outage that actually affected directly your services, uh, if it was on a router where your ports are, um, or if it's the root server and you're using the root server. Um, so you can limit it, then reduce the number, and um, you can change the type between maintenance and outage, or both of them, all of them. And of course, you can see the details. And that's all that I had for today, quick and short. Any questions to any of it? Ivan. Thank you. Just to keep you on your toes, Mike. Sure. Um, <laughs> uh, you mentioned about the um, remote trigger black holing. Yeah. Um, and uh, slash 32 root. Do, out of curiosity, do you offer that for IPv6? It would be, it would be for, for, for both v6 and, and v4. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any last questions before Mike leaves the stage? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Okay, that brings us to the close of Links 118. Thank you so much for coming. Just a, a couple of uh, final thoughts on that. I was interested in uh, the internships uh, presentation, and you know that's we. We're looking at it from a point of view where we're actually sort of continuing the knowledge on. Um, I remember from when we had Chris Cook, who spoke at our last meeting, he spoke about being inspired when he was a nine-year-old. He went on to, to do his swimming. He mastered it. He went to the Olympics, and now he's got his own swimming school. So he's gone through a, a journey there, and he's passing his knowledge back. And that's one of the things that we're trying to do there as well. So we've mentioned one of the, the uh, organisations that we're working with, but there's so many more out there and we've all got knowledge to share. So I think uh, that's something that we can all try and do as well in our own organisation. So thank you very much. And uh, if we can get the, uh, the survey up on the screen, if we've got any last uh, people to put in for the survey, um, yep, chance for £100 in vouchers and uh, we'll see you next time. Manchester in May for the AGM. Thank you.